so firstly a little disclaimer if you can hear things in the background it's mark he's fanning around he's having a shower it's currently a sunday when i'm filming this it is the sunday that i put my honeymoon update video live thank you so much for all of your lovely comments on that. I've been like favoriting them all and replying to you guys. It's honestly so nice to get back into the YouTube swing of things. I'm very excited to film videos. Hence, I filmed that video yesterday. <laughs> Hence why I'm filming a video again today. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do a 2017 favorites. I wasn't going to, but then I looked back at what was on the list of my 2016 favorites. I've done one of these every year since 2010 I think so I'm like you know what it's tradition and I look back at my 2016 favorites and quite a few of them were different which surprised me I thought they would all be boring and the same but they're not so I've got them here in a bag for you and also I'm going to throw them on my face as we go I have no makeup on now and to kind of spice things up and make this a little bit different I'm going to also show you my 10 most worn items of 2017 as well so there's a bit of fashion in there a bit of beauty thank you for your feedback about the bathroom renovations as well the next video will be a vlog which has a little like before of the bathroom and the hall stairs and landing which is what you can see out there which we're actually getting redone tomorrow uh well starting to get redone tomorrow that's why i'm filming this video today i was like you know what i'm gonna get things done before the builders move in and who knows what's gonna happen over the next five <laughs> Onto the favourites though, and primer wise, I'm actually really loving the Smashbox Primerizer, which I bought because of Alana, but that was a very recent purchase. So instead, I'm gonna pick the Becca First Light Priming Filter. It's what I wore on my wedding day. I feel like that's kind of a common theme amongst a load of these products, actually. I was kind of noticing that when I went through. So if you wanna see my wedding makeup tutorial, I'll make sure I'll link that up there for you. Last year though, I said it was the Too Faced Hangover RX Primer which I do really like. I've actually just binned it because I realized that I'd had it for a really, really long time and it started to smell a bit funky. But I like this one because it's got lots of moisture and I just feel very glowy and radiant after I apply this. For foundation, I feel like it will come as no surprise that obviously the It Cosmetics, your skin but better. I think that's what I had for last year. Yeah, I did. I'm currently using light, which is very exciting. Although I feel like I need to give a bit of an honorable mention to the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in the shade four. And at the moment, I'm kind of liking a mix of the two of them. It's just the shade which sort of matches me. Oh, what am I doing? I want need it on a brush. It's just a really good shade for me right now if I mix the two of these and I kind of feel like sometimes it cosmetics can be so glowy so radiant and actually the Giorgio Armani sort of dries it out in a little bit that makes it sound dry and cakey it's not I just feel like it sets a little bit better on the skin so last year I was really into the Estee Lauder double wear stay in place concealer it comes like in a little pot um, and also the Glossier um, stretch concealer in the shade light but this year I've really enjoyed the NARS Pot Concealer, I really like that. But overall, the Glossier just wins for me. It's, it's what I reach for if I'm wearing more makeup, or it's what I reach for if I'm literally doing like barely any makeup at all. I'm currently using the shade Medium. Oh, never used this one before. And um, I used light the other day and it just looked way too pale under the eyes. I feel like if you're slightly dry under the eyes, you will enjoy this because it is so <laughs> moisturizing. It's almost oily. Um, sometimes I do feel the need to set it, sometimes I don't. Um, and it hasn't got crazy amounts of coverage, but I just find it very brightening under the eyes. My next two favourites are non-movers from the year before, the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish Natural Light Plus. I just think it's the best powder out there. I don't tend to use a lot of powder, like I said, just in this kind of area to set. Uh, ooh, top flip, nice. But nothing beats it in terms of how subtle it looks and how non-drying it is. You literally can't make this stuff look cakey. And then also the contour. I did really enjoy the Tanya Burr contour stick this year. I use that a lot in the summer. But overall, you, you just can't beat the Kevin Aquan. It's in everyone's favorites for good reason. I'm currently using medium, but in the winter I would normally use light both tones work really well for me i love a bit of bronzer always have always will and last year i liked the um the cover fx sun kiss drops they were great i didn't really use them as much this year and also last year i mentioned the Too Faced like milk chocolate soleil one i really like that it's what i'm currently using at the moment but i feel like for the majority of the year and the one that i love the most it's completely ruined um but it's the mark jacobs one you know the one with the really 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 long name that just goes on forever um, if I can find it, I have a feeling this one was limited edition, but if I can find sort of the permanent collection counterpart, I'll link it down below. Um, because I'm a little bit more tanned right now, 
I'm sort of enjoying the tone of this, whereas in the winter I go for more of the Too Faced. You know me and Blush, we have a complicated relationship. Sometimes we're really on, sometimes we're really off. And I feel like this year we've just been off. Last year I mentioned the Clinique um, Melon Pop Cheek Pop. Clinique Pop Melon Pop. Too many pops. And this year if I had to pick one, I'd pick the Glossier Cloud Paint in the shade Dusk. I really like it, but just overall I'm not crazy about blush. I've basically got every single shade of these and they're really pretty, really easy to apply, never look overdone, but because I'm someone who's got such a red tone in their skin, I never want to add that back in. I never want to look even more beetroot than I already do. So we're kind of leaving blush on like, I like that one, but it's not my like biggest recommendation of the year. However, the Glossier um, Dew Effect Highlighter, the Halo Scope in the shade Quartz, look how much of this I have left. Like literally just this tiny top bit. It's fine, don't worry, I've got a backup already. I love this, applied onto the fingers and then pressed onto the cheeks. I just think it is the most natural highlighter out there. I feel like last, last year, year before last, <laughs> well, that's confusing, I was really into the Becca kind of powder one, the um, Shimmering Skin Perfector in Moonstone, and I still love that one, and I feel like I was into more of a really kind of intense highlight, but this year I'm definitely just more into one that's a bit more, looks like sweaty skin in a good way. <laughs> Can you hear you chopping your nails from here? Yeah. I said I can hear you chopping your nails from here. <laughs> Sorry, I doubt it'll come out. For my brows, I have another new entry. I feel like just brow care in general is definitely a favorite of 2017. Like going to get them threaded, going to get them professionally done. I got them threaded in New Zealand actually. And I feel like she did quite a good job. I got them done at spring in Queenstown and I had let them grow for three weeks. They were so, big she practically like laughed at me when I turned up and then she was very kind because she laughed when I mentioned that I like sometimes fill them in a bit she was like your brows are massive which they are I, I don't mind that I'm quite happy with that but I do sometimes want to add like a little bit in and I've really enjoyed the it cosmetics brow power it just comes in one shade universal taupe um, but I feel like it's a really good colour for me and I really did enjoy the Bobbi Brown one in previous years but when I use that one now it's a little bit too grey and so actually I've been converted. To hold them down I use the Glossier Boy Brow. Are you going to be in the background? <laughs> to hold them into place I use the Glossier Boy Brow which basically everyone does. I'll spare you the long description of this but it's bloody fantastic. Now with a lot of these favourites, if you have your own personal favourite, I would be like, yep, yeah, completely get it. I get that this bronzer is great, but I'm sure there are other amazing bronzers out there. I would, I understand. But with this one, the NARS Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base, it is so good, far superior to any other primer that I have used that I refuse to believe there is a better one out there. I've repurchased it time and time again. I've used it for years now. And as someone who has really greasy eyelids that just gobble up eyeshadow, this has changed my life. I just apply it and then I use, oh, this is a dry beauty blender, not nice. Um, I normally use just like a wet beauty blender, blend it in, you can't see it on the eyes. It has absolutely no color. It doesn't have any texture or anything to it doesn't dry your eyelids out. Eyeshadow lasts forever, love it. I've come in a little bit closer to discuss eyeshadow because I think I had four favorites last year. I had the Burberry Sheer Eyeshadow in Pale Barley, which I've barely worn at all this year. The MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot in Groundwork, still like, but again, haven't worn that much. Charlotte Tilbury's Eyes to Mesmerize in Betty, love that one, wore it on my wedding day. And then the MAC Eyeshadow in Saddle, which again, I really like, but I've sort of found a dupe this year that I just prefer the color of, the tone of. And so this year, if I had to pick individual shadows, I would pick these two. This is my little like MAC duo that's got MAC Sober in it. You can tell I love that. I mean, I've gone completely down to the pan. And then this one is Anastasia Beverly Hills in the shade Caramel. You know the story with this one, Lily and I kept seeing a lovely girl at reader events and she was always wearing this, looked amazing on her, bought it, have loved it ever since. If I was gonna pick a palette, it would be this one. Um, I feel like I don't use the shimmer shades in this very often, but the mattes, especially sourced and low blow, these two here, I mean, they're basically these two. Can you sense a the theme? I like warm toned matte browns. Um, I feel like right now I'm going to my family's pseudo Christmas day. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go with a bit of sober on a MAC 
217 just to have something quite plain on my lids right now they're gonna be like whoa Anna you're wearing makeup <laughs> I think sober is a great place to start if you want to get into warm brown eyeshadows but sort of the ready orangey tones are a bit too far for you I personally love that look but I think this is a very good introductory color so moving on to mascara I feel like in the last couple of years I've had some very good mascara discoveries i've had things like the fairy drops one the hair and make long and curl ones in 2017 though i don't feel like i made as many discoveries and i sort of had eyelash extensions for a part of the year had those on my wedding day loved them but they kind of wreck your lashes a bit i had lots of lash lifts done which meant that i could basically use any mascara and it would look good because i didn't have to curl them and have a waterproof mascara and i actually haven't had one done for a while because the growth cycle is weird in terms of you know some of your eyelashes fall out and then new ones grow and they're straight and then some are in and they're still curled and so they're a bit all over the shop so I've just waited for all of them to shed new lashes to come back in I've just been curling them with my Surratt eyelash curler which is the best and then using the YSL the shock waterproof mascara it's good I wouldn't say it's my best favorite mascara ever um, but it's a decent one I probably should um, get around to picking up another fairy drops one for lips I feel like there really isn't much to say for 2017 it was definitely the year of just wearing a balm on my lips just wearing like a very casual nude and kind of being done um, last year I said the by Terry Balm de Rose was my favorite this year I would definitely say the Glossier Balm.coms are my favorite I've literally got a million of these just like dotted around the coconut one is my favorite one and I like it because it is a balm without looking too glossy on the lips it's more like a matte balm super into that I also said the NARS velvet matte lip pencils I still enjoy those I just don't wear a bold lip as often I can literally like count the times I've worn a red lip on one hand um the Chanel Coco Rouge lipstick in Adrienne still love that and also the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in Super Cindy again still like them I feel like if I had one new discovery this year it would have been the Hourglass Girl Lip Stilos this is in the shade Futurist this is my favorite one I've like worn it down into a little nub that is a gorgeous gorgeous very simple nude color very close to my lips however glossier cake is the one that i have worn the most i have two of these i've worn my other little one down into a nub however today i'm just going to throw on some of the glossierbalm.com and be done uh, but now it's time to move on to that let's have a look in the wardrobe so i'm going to show you my 10 most worn items of the year and I haven't really planned this i'm just going to kind of go a little off piece and sort of look at what we've got in here and also have a think back to what i wore in the summer and I feel like probably my favourite purchase of the whole of 2017 ooh, ooh, is this. This camel coat from Whistles. I just love it and it makes me feel like the lady from Scandal. Whenever I wear it, it makes me feel badass. It makes me feel put together. It makes me feel chic. I feel like this was a great purchase that I will wear for many years to come. Um, it wasn't cheap. Unfortunately, not available anymore. Although there are so many other dupes out there. So for this... And every single thing that I mentioned in this video, they will either be linked down below for you or a high street dupe or just an available dupe will be down there. But I absolutely adore that. Another thing that I've worn a ton, and don't worry, this isn't normally hanging up. It is normally folded because it's super heavy. This is from Acme Studios. And this, I think it's called the Deborah Oversized Jumper. I've also seen it on net -Porte available in like a pale pink, which is beautiful however this gray shade i just feel like it's the perfect oversized slouchy jumper but that still looks put together still looks quite like not as casual as other big chunky knits that i've got here it's the most expensive one that i own but i feel like it was a great purchase because i've worn it absolutely loads and yeah i just oh i grin when i think of that oh my word this is probably my most worn garment full stop of the year this would be number one this is an equipment blouse it's in their kira style which the kira style all has this white piping on to make it look like pajamas um i did sit across from a rather drunk lady one time at dinner so a friend's dinner i didn't know her very well and she was like why are you wearing pajamas yes it has completely got that pajama vibe to it but that's why i love it i feel like whenever i go online i'm always looking at pajama style shirts but hey I love pyjamas. To me, this is a perfect minimal piece, but with a twist. I also wore this equipment shirt an absolute ton in the summer. I mean, look at it compared to the rest of my wardrobe. It's colourful. That is nuts. I never wear colourful things. 
but it just gets me in like the summer mood whenever I wear it and because it is kind of that dark blue and it's just a little bit of tie-dye effect I don't feel like it's too out of my comfort zone and actually whilst we're speaking about shirts they're a little bit out of my comfort zone it's not hanging up in my wardrobe at the moment because it's definitely more of a summer piece but the red and other story shirt that I bought kind of back like May time I loved wearing that I wore that an absolute ton through the summer and that was just it was like me dipping my toe into colour, just a very little bit than only one colour. I don't know how many things of that I've lost count. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's five. I feel like these have to go down as one, but these are the Topshop Raw Hem Straight Leg Jeans. They are absolutely glorious. They're my favourite kind of denim, my favourite kind of jeans. I definitely discovered straight leg jeans in 2017. That was a new thing for me. And now whenever I wear skinny jeans, I'm like, oh, this is really weird doesn't feel right and these are great they're 40 quid I've got them in four different colors I wear them all the time I've actually put some of the lighter washes under my bed just because I feel like they're more of like a summer wash and it'll be fun to get them back out when the weather warms up a bit but they are amazing they are my best kind of high street recommendation for denim these yeah okay let's talk about shoes for a minute the Acme Jensen boots I got these back in 2016 but I wear these boots all of the time. <laughs> even in the summer, I'm not crazy about sandals. And so even in the summer, if I can get away with wearing a boot, I'm wearing a boot. And these are great. They take a while to wear in. They definitely aren't most comfortable for like the first month of wearing them. But now they are like wearing slippers. And I just, I love a good pointy toe, which you can see by my other <laughs> favorite shoes. Um, these are from Whistles. And again, I think I picked these up in 2016. I have worn them to the point where they're like wearing off the tip. They're like a faux fur leopard print. I, I love leopard print. You guys know, I mean like look. But these are the most comfortable shoes I think I have ever, ever owned. I could wear these, I feel like I could hike up a mountain in these and they just go with everything because my wardrobe is basically all black. I love wearing all black with these. That is like my favorite uniform. I feel like I'm gonna lump these two together, but flat trainers that aren't really trainers, you know, kind of more like a fashion trainer, white Converse, black vans. I wore these vans all the time whilst we were away in New Zealand. And I didn't find these comfortable from the get-go, but now I do find them comfortable. These I've always found comfortable, but just they're an easy shoe to wear. You can dress them up, you can dress them down, depending on what you're wearing with them. Just a really nice genre of shoe that I didn't really have before, but definitely fell in love with them in 2017. Final thing, be right back. I know I don't really talk about fancy bags too often on here because I do find it a bit like grotesque. However, I'm actually thinking of selling two of my bags because I just don't wear them. I basically wear this bag every day <laughs> if I can fit everything I need in this bag, which most of the time that I can. It's the Celine, it's the Trio Zip one and it's the larger size that they do. I would definitely recommend getting the larger size because I can fit my purse in here. I don't have to do like any weird downsizing of anything to fit what I need into here. It can fit a massive purse, like a big old wallet, my phone, I normally put that in the front section. In the middle, I normally have like keys and sort of weird shaped things. I don't want to like misshape the leather. In the back, I normally have a camera, this camera I'm filming on, um, my sunglasses, lip balm, headphones, all sorts of things like that. And it honestly fits it all in without looking super, super bulky. It is the most practical bag that I own. I've got the most wear out of it this year. If you want to hear more of a review about it, I'm not sure there's much more to say than what I have just said, but let me know because honestly, it's like the best bag purchase I have made this year for sure. This year, last year, oof, who knows? But that is it. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing my favorites from beauty and fashion for the year of 2018. <laughs> but like I said, next week's video will be a vlog of the beginning of our bathroom renovations. So if you have any questions to do with that, let me know and I can answer those in that video for you. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Remember to check out my blog. There's been three new posts that have gone live this week. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.